Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So for today's episode, I'm going to be doing another comparison video, and I've chosen the game Ladybug. Um, I'm going to be doing it on just the Intellivision and the ColecoVision. Now, normally I would do this with the Atari Intellivision ColecoVision, uh, Atari 2600 to be exact, uh, but there was none. I mean, they didn't make one for the system. Now, I know there's a homebrew version of it. Um, I don't know how recent it is. But I have seen pictures of it, so I know it exists. Uh, but I don't have it, so I can't really uh, use that. But that's that's okay. I'm going to be using the Intellivision and ColecoVision. So I got my Intellivision and my ColecoVision already to go. So um, I'm not too familiar with this game. I didn't play it. I didn't. I actually never had it on the Intellivision. Uh, this is pretty recent that I just picked this one up, and so I never played it uh, really on that. Uh, I have played it a bit on the ColecoVision, and that was when I got this game. Um, I think, I, I don't remember where I picked this up. It was probably like at a thrift shop or something. Uh, I probably found a bunch of Coleco games or something. Uh, so I've had this one in my collection for a while, but I haven't really played much of it. So I'm going to be playing this almost like it's my first time again, and uh, see how, how well I do. I know it's, it's kind of like a Pac-Man game, um, so I should be okay. Anyways... Let's play some Ladybug on the Intellivision and compare it to ColecoVision. Okay, so we got Coleco Presents Universal's Ladybug. Uh, 1983. Seems like a lot of great games were made during that time. So let's start with, uh, well, player one or two. Obviously it's one. And I always like to do one on the level as well. So I think I have to hit enter. And one. Okay. So cucumber. I mean, overall, the the, the game's pretty colorful. I could I can give it that. Uh, you know, much more colorful than say Pac-Man, where it's like the solid kind of blue and just the white dots, or depending on the version of Pac-Man you're playing, obviously. This is pretty good. I mean, this is pretty decent. I mean, the X's kind of remind me a little bit of... Uh, actually, this whole game kind of reminds me a little bit of Mousetrap. More familiar with Mousetrap, obviously. I have uh, I didn't have this game when I was younger. I had Mousetrap. And I don't think I've ever played this in the arcade. I don't remember, anyways, playing it in the arcade. I mean, it's a decent kind of Pac-Man game. I like the, the trap door kind of idea. Much like in, uh, you know, Lock and Chase and, uh, like I said, Mouse Trap. Similar idea. I mean, you can spin the spin the doors around to change the maze, right? Lock all of the uh, bad guys. Oh, that's pretty cool. Looks like your uh, ladybug's soul just flew away. Uh, or ghost, or whatever you want to say. I mean, so far it's not overly complicated. <laughs> it definitely doesn't have the, the, the stress that Pac-Man has on it. I know I'm supposed to collect all those letters. There's letters throughout. And when you get them all, you uh, get bonuses. Am I stuck? Looks like I'm stuck. Well, that ain't good. Why you're stuck? The music could be, uh, you know, right on par there with uh, the typical in television sounds. You know, other than getting stuck there for that little bit. I don't know if that was just the controller or if the game just kind of hung up there. It's actually pretty good. I, I kind of like this game. Definitely a lot more tamer Pac-Man style. And I love how you can change the, the maze around. Gives it that little bit of extra flair to it. Uh, it died. I 
What am I getting again? Eggplant or something? Forgot to look at whatever the uh, vegetable or fruit or whatever it was that. Oh, no! These guys look a little funny though. I don't know what they're supposed to be, I can't remember. But uh, they look a little funny to me. Ooh, a carrot. Part three. And I actually don't mind using the disc controller with this one. I like how it, uh, you know, helps me glide through the maze a little bit easy. Uh oh. Really gotta get skillful with uh, those trapdoor things. Whoa. Is it over? It's over. Almost got the extra though. Okay, so now we're going over to the ColecoVision version. Universal's Ladybug, 1982. Wasn't the Intellivision 1983? I think so. Okay. So we got our typical skill level screen. Uh, one. Okay, so I mean, it's so far looking pretty close. Music is the same. But that's it. I mean, the uh, ladybug's different looking. The Obviously, that creature up there looks a little bit different. Not as. The board's not as colorful, I don't think. I, I don't know. That could just be my TV, though. I mean, I'm not getting a lot of good reception here. I probably should have changed the wire I'm using. Maybe that would have helped. Um, but I mean, it's pretty much the same. The, the, obviously, those creatures are make more sense now. And of course, I'm using a ColecoVision controller to lock them in there. Uh, so that's that, oh, that's that skull thing. See, I, I can make out the graphics a little bit better in this one. Um, I found in the Intellivision one, I wasn't sure what some of the graphics were. Um, maybe if I had the manual, I could have read the, you know, what they were, but I can clearly see that that's a skull now. Uh, when I was looking at it in the Intellivision, I was thinking it looked kind of like a white Pac-Man ghost. So I wasn't really sure what it was at first. I don't have a whole lot of experience with these this game, so I mean I'm really playing these really for the first time. I've I've dabbled in them, like probably just turned them on just to see if it worked. Didn't actually spend any good time playing it and trying out the game. So far the skill in this, uh, well again, I, I went skill level 1, and um, you know, just like in the television version, it doesn't seem like it's overly complicated. Ah. I say that as I die. But I, ultimately I'd say that this is pretty good. I mean. The thing about Coleco is that uh, a lot of the graphics in the Coleco did um, look a heck of a lot better than both the Atari and the Intellivision of the day. Usually people that had a ColecoVision made everybody else jealous, <laughs> who didn't have one. Unless you had an Atari 5200 or, you know, some of the computers of the day. There we go. I'm on that carrot level again. It's pretty fun. I actually don't mind this game. 
I'm not familiar with the arcade like I said before, so I don't know if this is exactly like the arcade. But I can see this being pretty close. Kind of an addictive game too, just like Mousetrap. I mean, I loved playing Mousetrap. Another great game on the ColecoVision. I did a comparison video a while back, I believe, where I did Mousetrap for the uh, Intellivision, Atari, and ColecoVision. Oh, skulls are blocking. That's not good. I like how you can kind of trap them into like an area and just go to town. <laughs> Whoa. Ah. There's the carrot there, I can grab that. See if I can complete the level. Ooh, radish. Whoa, I almost touched that skull. That wouldn't have been good. Looks like I just need the T. Spell extra. Or not. I like how the enemies oops don't all come out at once like in Pac-Man does. I think that's what makes Pac-Man a harder game, is that the ghosts come out all at, all at the same time and, and just immediately start becoming a problem. This one, not like that. Well, there you go. I mean, they're actually pretty good. Uh, both versions are pretty sound. The Intellivision, kind of like I said, I found some of the graphics. Um, I didn't quite make out what they were. Uh, I think you almost have to go into the manual and read what they are. Uh, it didn't really translate too well. And, uh, you know, that's a shame because, you know, the Intellivision does have that capability. Uh, so I, I think the Intellivision version probably did need a little bit of tweaking and it could have been there. But, I mean, that didn't take away from the fun of the game. It played very well. And, in fact, the Coleco version played almost the same, in my opinion. I felt that the skill level was almost the same. Uh, the controls being a little bit different because, you know, the, the ColecoVision controller uh, is slightly different than the Intellivision controller. I mean, it, they, they almost look the same, but the way they operate is, is completely different. So, um, I found that controlling the Intellivision version was a little bit easier for me. Now, I'm used to the disc controller on the Intellivision, so that just could be me. Um, I know with the with ColecoVision, you have the option also to use like a joystick, like there's uh, different joysticks that they made for it. So uh, you can you can use almost one that's like an arcade style joystick, which actually would probably be a little bit better. Um, it, it's a shame that the Intellivision came with hardwired disc controllers like the way it did, and uh, didn't have that option to be able to plug in you know classic joystick style controllers. But I mean, you're going back to like late 70s, uh, 79, I believe. Um, the video game scene was brand new, pretty much. So, I mean, it was hard for them to really think about what, uh, you know, think ahead about what the system could use and, and the kind of controllers it would need and all that other stuff. I'm sure they were just thinking about creating one single package and that's that's what you would use. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ladybug is pretty fun. I mean, it's it's a Pac-Man clone, obviously. Pac-Man was, was the big thing. Uh, lots of games turned out like Pac-Man. I mentioned that a few times, like, you know, Mousetrap. Uh, also a Pac-Man clone, and uh, I mean, there's a bunch of them that I've actually played uh, that are very similar to a Pac-Man style game. This one actually is, I think, I like this one. I, I, I kind of like it just as much as I like Mousetrap. Um, just because of the way that the maze shifts, the way you can change the maze around. I found it a little bit easier than uh, Mousetrap with, uh, you know, having to shut the doors. Even with Lock and Chase, I mean, I found Lock and Chase to have the same, similar idea but a little bit more frustrating on the way the controls work. This with the spinning door, really good idea, brilliant idea. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to hit a button. You don't have to, you just kind of run through it, and it just, you know, spins. And I, I think that that's that's what made it more enjoyable to me. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I would recommend both. If if you have both systems, or 
um, you know, if, if you've been thinking about picking this game up, they're actually a pretty decent game. I would give it a shot. It's too bad the Atari didn't have an official release. I don't know if how it would have run or how it would have looked. I can't imagine it would have been the greatest. Um, probably would have been very similar to Mousetrap. So maybe that's why they didn't make it. I don't know. Or maybe it was just timing or who knows. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think of Ladybug. Did you ever play it on any, any of these systems? Did you play it on any other systems? Or did you play it in the arcade? It's a fun game. It's addictive. It's Pac-Man style. You can't go wrong with it. And, um, I mean, it's just overall a lot of fun. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe to my channel. Talk to you later.